Daily, hundreds of thousands of children across the globe have their rights violated, including their rights to health, their right to quality education, their right to be heard, and their right to be free from abuse, violence, and exploitation. Many are victims of crimes sometimes perpetrated by those closest to them. Yet, a fraction of the children who are denied their rights have access to a fair and effective justice system able to make decisions in their best interest. In addition, numerous families are separated from their children through judicial decisions or denied their right to social security and other benefits which would support them in caring for their children. Yet, very few are able to challenge these decisions in court. Access to justice can be defined, as we've just heard, as the right of individuals or groups to obtain a quick, effective, and fair response to protect their rights, prevent or solve disputes, and control the abuse of power through a transparent and efficient process in which mechanisms are available, affordable, and accountable. Equitable access to justice means ensuring that all children are served and protected by justice systems. Without accountability mechanisms and the possibility to claim for protection and redress, human rights instruments, even if widely ratified, are just words. As stated by the UN United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child, and I quote, for rights to have meaning, effective remedies must be available to redress violations. Access to justice is therefore a necessary aspect of child rights realization, although it is not, of course, the only measure of implementation. As we will hear later today, however, obstacles are many. Accessing justice is a challenge for all children, but especially for the most vulnerable amongst them. Lack of access to justice is a defining attribute of poverty and exclusion, and certain groups of children and adolescents, including girls, children from minorities, children with disabilities, are more affected than others. In other words, justice is least accessible to those who need it most. Yet, when accessible to all, justice systems can protect vulnerable groups against injustice, provide them with opportunities to thrive, and keep families together. When accessible to all, justice systems are powerful means to put an end to abuse, challenge decisions denying access to education or health, or restore entitlements such as social benefits. Accordingly, Governments across the globe, with the support of UNICEF and other partners, are increasingly adjusting their procedures to protect the rights of all children who come in contact with the justice system as victims, witnesses, or parties to civil and administrative procedures. I'm thinking of custody or inheritance. This is in line with the UN guidelines for justice in matters involving child victims and witnesses of crimes. For example, Court settings and police stations are being adapted and made less intimidating. Police officers, judges, and magistrates are being trained to communicate with children in a sensitive manner. Protective measures are put into place, such as avoiding direct contact between the child and the alleged perpetrator. In parallel to these institutional improvements, efforts are also made to enhance the capacity of families and children to claim for their rights legal and paralegal and social support to children going through justice processes is increasingly being provided, for example, through child rights centers or legal clinics where children and their families can obtain information on the avenues for redress, receive legal and social advice, be referred to appropriate services, a lawyer, a doctor, a psychologist, for example, and in some cases, they can receive direct legal assistance to initiate a judicial process. These changes are important but relatively recent. And at present, justice systems still often perpetuate inequalities instead of combating them. Also, little is known about children's access to justice worldwide. And justice system reforms and rule of law agendas often 
do not include children as an integral part. To address this gap, UNICEF in Europe and Central Asia region has initiated, together with the International Development Law Organization, a research study on the issue that will be completed next June. One of the preliminary findings of the study is that children are confronted with the same barriers as anyone else in society. Lack of awareness, court fees, distrust in the system, and fear of stigma, for example. In addition, they face specific obstacles due to their particular status of children. You've just mentioned that. For example, children under a certain age do not have the legal right to personally file a complaint and participate in legal proceedings. Also, social norms in most countries make it unacceptable and in fact unconceivable to the children themselves to lodge complaint without parental consent. The main reasons for not pursuing justice that children mentioned in focus group discussions were that they didn't understand the procedures, they thought it would not be taken seriously or they would not be listened to, they thought that it would be not be useful and nothing would change. Social norms often make violence a fact for life rather than a rights violation that can be brought to court. Access to justice for children, therefore, requires specific interventions, such as the ones I mentioned earlier, tailored to the particular status of children. Simply extending to children generic measures designed for adults is not sufficient. So by way of conclusion, let me say that only when all young girls forced into marriage will obtain redress, only when the Roma child will have recourse against exclusion from school, only when the poor family will be able to challenge denial of support or separation. Only then will justice systems meet their real purpose and find their intended meaning. Justice for all children. Thank you for your attention.